Hi there everyone here again with another Share Factor tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to try something a little bit different and show you how you can use PC editors such as Handbrake and other various applications to re-encode your videos to add them to Share Factory. First you might be wondering what is Handbrake? Handbrake is an open source video transcoder that you can find free online at handbrake.fr. For our purposes this can encode your videos into almost any format you need. Once you install and open Handbrake, select a file you wish to re-encode. Let's go with something a little older. Handbrake will then read your video for the actual resolution and other various formats. When you first get in, they'll probably be a little overwhelmed by some of the different settings you have. On the right hand side, you have various presets of the different types of devices and other kinds of settings that you would have for iPods and other kinds of formats. For these are pretty much presets, so these will be saved settings that you can actually set up for each of your however you're going to make your videos. When we start out, let's go ahead and set up our preferences because this will probably be the first time you open this up. You'll probably have this set to automatic. I go ahead and change this to MP4 just to make the files that I always make come out as MP4. Either MP4 or M4V will both work for a Share Factory's video import but this is just a personal preference. You can also set up certain things like how you want the file format to be created, if you want to put a, pre, uh, a preset to it to say HB underscore whatever the name is so you know that it's a handbrake file, but really it's that's personally, totally personal preference. And we will apply. So these different tabs will show you the different things you can do to your videos. When we start out, let's go to the picture format. So this will be the resolution you'll have of 60. Right now, this is a really old video that I have that's 640 by 480. And I can come into the videos tab and see, do I want to make this a 12 frames a second or 60 frames a second? Those are the, the range of video format or frames per second that your videos will actually support. So if you go up to something like 120 frames a second, it's not going to be able to be ex uh, understood by ShareFactory's video import. Other settings can include how high the quality you want to be. You can go something, I usually go with like 18 constant quality, or you can go with an average quality where you can actually say the 22 megabits per second that ShareFactory supports. So as, as this reads from kilobits per second, you would say 22 thousand average bit rate you don't have to go that high obviously I would say something more around the range of five megabits per second is probably doable but really this is totally personal preference and that's why I usually just did stick with constant quality of 18 or so if we go over here to chapters videos pictures you can see it's H.264 or MP4. None of these other formats are supported, so you always want to leave this as H.264. Other options can include, the main one we'll probably focus on for this entire exercise is you want to be able to constrain the key frame interval of ShareFactory videos. So you would type for a handbrake setting would be key int equals 30. That will make that your keyframes show up every 30 frames. So what does this in fact do? This creates a keyframe for every number of frames that you have in your video. So after 30 frame passes, you create another keyframe. Another 30 passes, another keyframe. These keyframes are basically the images you see when you seek through your videos. So the fewer you have in this in your video overall, the more the actual decoder has to seek to the next keyframe to know where to start playback. So the larger this number, the less responsive your video is going to be. So this is why something that has like a keyframe interval of 300 can't be accepted into ShareFactor videos. So what you'll do is you'll just restrain this down to a feasible number of something like 30 and that will allow you to get your videos into the project. We can dive into this a little deeper actually if you enable the used advanced tab settings. If you click over here you'll find some other options that you actually can enable for ShareFactor videos. 
One thing I usually, now none of this is actually required, however, this is something that can help you make your videos more responsive in your actual app. So you say your reference frames, make those down to one and B frames down to zero. This will, B frames and reference frames are stuff that happens in between keyframe steps. So they're another form of compression. By reducing this amount, you're making the decoder work that much less while it's trying to read your videos. So now that you've set up all of your encoding preferences, let's say you have a video that you don't really want so long. Like you have something like an 11 hour video, but you need this broken down into the one hour limit that you have. Well, you can set your video in Handbrake to change what duration you want. So you have a specific time code, say uh, two minutes in, and you go to something like and we'll say five minutes in. O oh, five do zero. And that will actually pull out this very specific section of your video that you can actually transcode into a new video of its own. Start the encoding process and then you'll make your video into a new MP4 that you can then pull into Share Factory. Finally, let's review the main settings to apply within Handbrake in order for your videos to properly import into ShareFactory. In the Videos tab, add the code keyint equals 30 to the Extra Options field to restrain your keyframe interval rate. Set your frame rate between 12 and 60 frames a second. Ensure your video quality does not exceed 22 megabits per second. The video duration cannot exceed one hour. The resolution cannot exceed 1080p and your video codec is always H.264. For further details on the types of videos accepted by ShareFactory's video import, see page 68 of the user manual. So we know now how to change existing videos with applications like Handbrake, but what about applications that are going to record your video before you actually make them? This can change based on application to application, so you'll have to do your own research on how you can adjust this for the individual application you're wanting to use. To go over some more common ones, we'll talk about stuff like XSplit. XSplit is a general use application that a lot of people use to record their footage of their PCs or their consoles from different sources and different applications. So you can set the individual keyframe interval with some additional settings within the encoders of XSplit. You can find details on how to encode your videos into your own specifications in XSplit's Frequently Asked Questions by following the link below. Something to always keep in mind when researching how to do these operations for your application in question is that each application may refer to keyframe intervals differently. You may find the option referred to as iframes or even group of pictures as seen here in XSplit. Once you're ready to create your video in XSplit, select Output, then the Settings options next to Local Recording. For your video encoding quality, select Custom. This will allow you to customize the various settings on how your video is created. Select the Quality Settings option and add the GOP code displayed now to lock the keyframe interval to 30. This will ensure your videos will use the correct keyframe interval when adding to ShareFactory. Other programs may have vastly different settings. For programs such as Premiere, you'll actually find a keyframe interval at the bottom of the export process. Under Advanced Settings, enable Keyframe Distance and you can freely scroll the keyframe interval up and down. So switch that to 30 and you're good to go. I'll export the video and you should have no problem. That does it for this ShareFactor tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below or check out any of the links in the description. And be sure to stay tuned. We'll have more tutorials coming soon in the future. Thanks everyone.